Is Starship actually going to launch? There's a new space plane from New Zealand, ULA Centaur Anomaly has been seen and much more is to come. This is Tomorrow Space News. We're starting off the show with the biggest story of the week and most likely the biggest story of the year. Starship, the largest rocket ever built, is on track for a launch in just seven days. And this isn't any Elon time we're talking about. In fact, Elon Musk has been one of the most pessimistic voices in terms of the launch date recently. The FAA have advisories at the ready and SpaceX have unveiled their timeline to the public. This week, SpaceX are gearing up to perform a second wet dress rehearsal of the full Starship stack. It's assumed that this will be very similar to the one that we saw in January. Assuming that this is successful, the first launch attempt will take place approximately a week later, but that doesn't mean that Starship will actually launch on that date. This is the world's largest rocket ever, so get ready for some scrubs. According to Elon, Starship is ready for launch and SpaceX is awaiting regulatory approval from the Federal Aviation Administration, but soon after this tweet was published, teams could be seen working on Ship 24 once again. And just before I started recording this episode, Elon tweeted yet again, saying that the first launch attempt is trending towards the end of the third week of April. And it's not only Ship 24 that's been getting some work, as even with the OFT coming up, the rest of Starbase is business as usual. Younger sibling Ship 28, the first to use the top-down stacking method, has been getting spun around in High Bay 1. Before S24 was stacked atop B7, the Super Heavy booster underwent another grid fin test to ensure that all four were steering as expected. These are crucial for the return to launch site recovery, which SpaceX won't be testing on the UFT, but could simulate in the Gulf of Mexico. Starlink is getting yet another cruise line deal as Norwegian Cruise Line are testing the space-based high-speed internet service provider on their ship Norwegian Breakaway. If Norwegian Breakaway's trial is successful, which by the positive words from the CEO Harry Sommer, it sounds like it is, the company are going to roll out Starlink dishes across seven additional ships before the end of 2023, including the holding company's three newest vessels. The rollout plan for the rest of the fleet is yet to be finalised by the company. See this photo? That's the aftermath of the reports that were circulating last week about ULA's Centaur 5 anomaly at the test stand at the Marshall Space Flight Centre. The photo is from Blue Origin, who, according to ULA CEO Tori Bruno, were very helpful in securing the video and sending it to themselves and NASA, following all of the necessary protocol. Unfortunately, that's the end of the solid facts, and venturing any further would just be pure speculation. And just to be clear, Tori didn't have to tell us that this had happened. ULA are a private company, they can keep themselves to themselves. Elon Musk doesn't highlight all of the anomalies at McGregor, for example. I think we can all agree that space planes are cool. I mean, one of the most loved vehicles of all time is a space plane, and NASA built five of them, only counting the ones that went to space, of course. What if I told you there's a new space plane in town, and it's designed to be rapidly reusable? There's no belly flopping for door and aerospace, as they are aiming to utilise normal runways for daily flights to space, utilising the same vehicle. On the 29th, 30th and 31st of March, Dawn Aerospace successfully completed test flights of its Mark II Aurora out of the Glentoner Aerodrome on New Zealand's breathtaking South Island. Previously tested with standing jet engines, these flights were the first tests with a rocket engine propelling the aircraft. Just because the Mark II Aurora is certified as an aircraft doesn't restrict it to normal aircraft altitudes, as Dawn are planning to gradually increase the altitude of the test flights until the Kármán line has been reached. From here, Dawn is aiming to become the first company to send the same vehicle to 100 kilometers twice in 24 hours. The company's next phase of development, Phase 3, will see a new space plane called Mark III. This is the spacecraft that will be capable of deploying a second stage and sending a payload onto orbit, whilst the space plane returns to land. And in case any of you were wondering from the video you saw earlier, yeah, Mark II isn't automated. A person flies it remotely using a joystick and a throttle quadrant. That's a very cool job to have. Virgin Orbit, after laying off their staff, has officially filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. In a statement, the company said the company is focused on a swift conclusion to its sale process in order to provide clarity on the future of the company to its customers, vendors and employees. In the interim, Virgin Orbit will continue operating in the ordinary course as a debtor in possession under the jurisdiction of the bankruptcy court and in accordance with the applicable provisions of the US bankruptcy code. 
Running out of money hasn't stopped other aerospace companies in the past from finding buyers, but as there are so many entrants into the small sat market at the moment, a positive future for Virgin Orbit still remains uncertain. We all want an investor to swoop up the company and make it profitable, but we also need to keep our dreams realistic. It's been a bit of a quieter week this week, but before we get into that, thank you to the citizens of tomorrow. Your monthly contributions are greatly appreciated, helping to fund Station 204, allowing us to do our live shows every week. If you'd like to see new scripts as they're being written, hang out in our primary communications channel on Discord, or just see your name on screen twice a week, head down to the join button below. Where were we? Oh yeah, space traffic. The week started out with Hyperbola 1 carrying a dummy payload to retest the reliability of this vehicle. Its past three flights spread across 2021 and 2022 have all been failures, leading to a loss of payload. This flight, however, was a complete success, its second ever successful flight, so fingers crossed actual payloads can fly on top soon. Departing Site 95 at the Xiquan Satellite Launch Center at 0400 Universal Time on Friday, this iSpace is not to be confused with the Japanese iSpace. The Chinese company has a dash in the name, the Japanese company doesn't. Next up, and the last launch for this week at least, is Intel Sat 40E and Tempo, which was launched on this Falcon 9 from Slick 40 at the Cape. It left the pad just 30 minutes after Hyperbola 1 at 0430 UTC, also on Friday, and successfully delivered the dual purpose payload to a geostationary transfer orbit. Firstly, Intelsat 40E is a communication satellite designed to increase coast to coast bandwidth for Intelsat's customers. Being hosted on this satellite is Tempo, NASA's tropospheric emissions monitoring of pollution payload. It's a spectrometer in the ultraviolet to visible range that will measure pollution over North America. The booster supporting this flight, serial number B1076, landed on a shortfall of Gravitas stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. Coming up over the next seven days are some pretty high profile missions. First of all, it's Transporter 7, the seventh dedicated rideshare flight from SpaceX. It's departing from Slick 4 East at Vandenberg. We also have Juice, ESA's Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, launching on an Ariane 5 from Kuro on Thursday. You won't want to miss that one. And to start off next week, we could have the Starship Orbital Test Flight, but that still remains slightly unlikely. And in terms of tomorrow's shows, on Wednesday, Dr. Tamitha Scove will be back with space weather. On Friday, we'll be back with a live show, and I'll be back next Monday with a potential new rocket to talk about. But for now, happy Easter, thanks for watching, and goodbye. Right.